We're meeting um, here in Washington to celebrate the 75th uh, anniversary since the establishment uh, of the world's most successful and most resilient uh, defensive alliance. Uh, we're meeting at a time of grave challenges, uh, at a time when there is a war raging in the heartland of Europe. We're meeting at a time when we will continue to uh, uh, support Ukraine uh, for as long as it takes in order to ensure that Russia does not win this war of unprovoked aggression. This is a time when the NATO alliance needs to address a series of complicated global challenges. And this is also a time when we need to reconfirm our steadfast commitment to spend at least 2% of our GDP on defense expenditure. This is particularly important for European countries, not only to meet this target, but also to streamline our defense spending in order to further strengthen the NATO alliance. I have been a steadfast advocate of more integration in European spending. We don't just need to spend more. We also need to be smarter about how we allocate funds in order to increase our collective defense. And strengthening our European defense capabilities is complementary to NATO's defense posture. It strengthens NATO, and that is why we need to use the next European cycle to focus more on how we bolster our European defense. It is in our interest to do so. Okay. We're not going to comment uh, on, uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. Uh, you know, there are elections coming up uh, in the United States, and uh, we will, of course, uh, respect uh, the decision uh, of the American people. Personally, I've worked both with uh, President Trump uh, and with President Biden. What is of particular interest to us is to ensure that uh, we maintain uh, this very strong transatlantic bond, which has always been at the heart of the alliance.